Hey everybody, I am coming making this video message and I want to talk to you all in deeper detail about giving or being a blessing to someone. Now, briefly last week, I had shared a short and in that 60 second clip, I said that we should not be asking a bunch of questions or making statements to someone that comes and they are in need. And a lot of people um, sometimes will assume when someone comes to them and asks for help or some type of assistance that it's always monetary. Everybody that comes to you and they are in need of something, it is not always going to be financial. Everybody is not always going to come to you asking you for money. So let me start there because I need to tell people this. That's number one. Number two that I need you all to understand is this. If you honestly know that you are not in a position to help someone, be a blessing to someone, or give to someone, then you need to be upfront and honest about that when you tell people that. Or I'm sorry, when people come to you. When people come to you and they ask you for something, and it's not, again, just money. There are people out here that need you to just be a listening ear maybe they're going through something and they just want to vent some people they are so angry and so hurt and heartbroken they just want someone to understand them they just want someone to hear them out when they are having a hard time sometimes you can feel like the world is against you all types of people have gotten to this place in life i don't care how intelligent you are i don't care how successful you are i don't care how beautiful or handsome you are i don't care how anointed and popular you are you will get to a place in your life where you feel like everybody is against you you will feel like the world is against you you will feel like nobody understands you so there may be someone or a few people who trust you enough they feel your spirit enough to where they trust you to come to you and vent about something and they simply just want you to be a listening ear they may want to scream they may want to yell and curse. They may want to just break down and cry because you are the person that they trust to conduct th themselves that way with. Sometimes you can't act like this in front of certain people because they will judge you. They will then slander you and they will accuse you of not being an authentic man or woman of God or they may just say you are not a good decent person because you were screaming and hollering and yelling and they saw you in a very vulnerable moment so there's that the next thing I need you all to know is that when someone comes to you like I said if you know that you're not in a position to help someone, you need to be upfront and honest about that. Let's say someone does come to you and they ask you for money. If you truthfully know that you don't have a lot of money to give, you need to be upfront and honest with that person or those people and tell them, listen, I'm on a fixed income. I have a fixed budget. I cannot help you. I've paid all my bills. I have to pay this. I have to pay that. I don't have any extra money to spare. Someone may come to you and say, I need you to babysit. It could be a best friend. It can be maybe one of your neighbors. It could be a family member. If you know that you really honestly don't care for kids, or if you know that that person's kids are not your cup of tea, you need to, again, be upfront and honest with that person. Tell them the truth in love and respectfully. Just say, listen, sis, listen, um, BFF, listen, neighbor, you insert the neighbor's name. Just say, I um, don't really feel comfortable babysitting your kids. Now, I can refer you to somebody that's really good if you trust them. My referral, you can trust it because this person is very dependable. They are very reliable. They will not hurt your child. Or if the person has children, they will not hurt your children. Let people know that. Like I tell you all all the time, keep your bill current with people. You don't allow someone to come to you and request something of you and then you give them no response on it because it's just leaving it open for people to assume and they will think certain things and a mind start wandering and working overtime. So just to avoid all that, tell people up front, yeah, I don't really 
care for your children they are a little bit too rowdy for me i'm a little bit older so loud noise that bothers me or your children are too young some people they'll babysit but they don't like watching kids that are in diapers because they don't want to have to deal with the hassle of changing a pamper or a pull-up they don't want to deal with toddlers they don't want to deal with kids that are in the terrible twos or they're three or four years old where they require a lot of attention and sometimes they are restless they are hyperactive they are always running around you have to keep them um, entertained i'm sorry they don't want to lay down and take a nap now if you have an older child maybe that's 10 11 12 or teenagers then that's a little bit better you all have to get this stuff established the next thing I want to let you all know is that, and I'm going to give you a scripture on this. The Bible tells us to be a cheerful giver. And the Bible also says if we give, we should not give grungingly. Some people, you may be wondering what grungingly means. Grungingly just means to do something in a hesitant or kind of like a reluctant manner. You have a attitude behind why you are giving something to someone so some of you all you may get into a place where somebody is asking you for money and you have an attitude it's not that you're broke it's not that them asking you for money is going to put a dent in your home or your finances but you just mad that they asking you and so you rolling your eyes at them you're questioning them about the type of man or woman they are you're questioning them about, well, you're a grown man. You're a grown woman. You shouldn't come to me and be asking me for $30. I'm not giving you no more money. You need to get your S word together. They say the cuss word. You need to get your sh together. Um, I don't have time for this. Or why didn't you do this or that? What did you spend your check on when you got it? I don't know how many times I have to say this. Everybody out here has gotten to a point where we have had a hard time in life. I don't care how anybody tries to dress, dress it up. It's not up for debate with me. I don't care whether you were this type of person 10 or 15, 20, 30 years ago. We have all to a certain extent and some people still need a little bit of help. Only pride and ego gets in the way and makes a lot of people not admit this. They will lie about it. They will not admit it. But if you um, get to a place where you are shaming people and down talking people because they are asking you for help, they are asking you for assistance, you are wrong. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse seven is just telling us God loves a cheerful giver. Be happy. You should be happy that you're in a position to help someone. You should be happy that you're in a position to give to someone. And you should be happy because remember the days and the times and the seasons and the years that you were broke. Think about that for a minute. Take all the time that you need. Think about the times where you were hungry. Think about the times where you had no food. You can only eat um, the, the cheap little noodles that they sell at the grocery store. A lot of kids in college eat them. Think about that season of your life when that's all you can eat or a pack of hot dogs. Think about the time you couldn't even get that. You barely had a loaf of bread. Think about the times where you struggled and you couldn't pay a bill. Think about the times where you did pay all of your bills, but you didn't have enough money to buy groceries. And if you did have a little bit of money left to buy groceries, it wasn't enough to feed yourself and your family or your child. Just think about that. I think what escapes a lot of people is that we always sometimes forget where we come from. And when you forget where you come from, it's easy for you to look down on the next person and judge them and talk about them and be real uppity, smug and arrogant and prideful and try to shame someone that is coming to you asking you for help. I have told you all numerous times, numerous times I've told you all in numerous video messages that when someone comes to ask you for something, more than likely they are embarrassed that they even have to come to you and ask. I don't know anybody who's like really proud to come and ask somebody for money or a place to stay or some food or can you give me a ride or can you babysit for me and trust and believe if 
somebody coming to you and they ask you for something, it's probably because they don't have anybody else that they could go to. Now, we're not going to make assumptions that if they're coming to you and asking you for help, that they've burned bridges with other people. Because I know where a lot of you all's mind will go. Oh, well, they're coming to me because they probably didn't beg and ask so many other people. So they don't have no other choice but to come to me because they take taking advantage of me. If somebody is taking advantage of you because they know your heart and because they know you're not going to tell them no, again, ma'am or sir, that's on you. I never said when you help someone that you don't use wisdom. You are always using wisdom, using your brain. That's always in order. Having discernment and knowing, nope, I'm not going to give this person any money. Nope, I'm not going to help this person babysit their children. Nope, I'm not going to take this person over here because I know when I drop them off, they're doing something that's messy. It could get them in trouble. I can actually get in trouble because they trying to go and do something and it's illegal. They trying to go in an area where there are illegal activities involved. So if they want to get there, they're going to have to ask somebody else. These type of scenarios, like I say, they look different for every single person. But overall, the bottom line is this. When you are blessed, God has put you in that position to be a blessing to others. Not to talk about them, not to judge them, not to shame them. Not to ask them a whole list of questions. Who are you or who am I to put somebody on trial that wholeheartedly, 100% genuinely need help? Who are we? Why would you put somebody on trial when tomorrow or tonight you could be that very person that needs some level of help? And like I said, it's not always about money. Every time you all hear about blessing somebody, or being a blessing to somebody or of some level of aid or assistance. You all always think it's about money. It's not always about that. Again, it could be someone needs you to just be supportive. Some people out here, they have an engagement coming up. They're opening up a business. And maybe a lot of people don't believe in their dream. But they invited you because in their heart and in their mind, they believe that you believe in what they're doing. And so your presence there at their opening, at the grand opening of their restaurant or their pop-up shop or whatever they got going on, that would mean the world to them. I want you all to really start to open your mind up to this because a lot of people, you are quick to reject somebody that's asking for help like you just know what your future in this world is going to be for the rest of the time God allows you to live and breathe. You should be happy to give, but again, use wisdom because I'm gonna tell you something. The flip side of what I put out, I'm gonna tell you, I definitely use wisdom. I definitely use wisdom. There are people right now who email me and they come at me and they ask me to send them money. Yeah, no, that's not gonna happen. See, some people, they will try to play on knowing how your heart is set up and they know your mentality about certain things. And so they will come and try to take advantage of that and feel like, oh, he or she said that she's a giving person. She believes in blessing people. So see, I am i don't know her. I've never seen her in my life. But I'm going to go and I'm going to ask her to cash at me. I'm going to ask her to send me something. Yeah, I don't play these types of games with people. Do not under any circumstances email me or come at me and ask me to send you anything. Because like I said, scammers do that and certain people trying to test you and they want to try to manipulate a situation that they feel can be beneficial to them. Yeah, no, I'm not playing these types of games with people. See, stuff like that, you have to immediately shut that down. Because I know for a fact God didn't send you. Now, I'm not saying God can't send somebody, but see, a lot of people have tried to pull that behind seeing certain messages. So, yeah, that's just, let me just throw that out there. Because a lot of you all, you have tried me within the past, like, couple of months with that. Don't do that. Don't do that because I'm not going to respond to you. You will be ignored. I definitely don't play these types of games. Don't test me. And please don't insult my intelligence. But anyway, back to the message. What I'm saying to you guys is that if you know that you are not in a position to babysit, to give someone money, to be a listening ear because you just don't feel like hearing somebody, you don't have time to be there for someone emotionally. You're emotionally unavailable. Be honest with people. Just tell them what it is. 
Don't leave people out in the cold when they are coming to you and they really need assistance or they really need help. Be clear with people. If somebody does want you to come and babysit, why would you start questioning them about, well, where are you going? I babysat for you last week. You always going out to brunch with your friends. You always going out for a drink. You always going on the date with your man or with your woman. Hey, listen, if you offer, um, I mean, I'm sorry, not offered, but if someone asked you, could you babysit and you agreed, if you agreed, you need to leave it at that. Now, if you know you have to go to work, or if you know that you have something else to do, or if you know that that is not something you want to do on a regular basis, get that stuff cleared out from jump. Tell the person, okay, I'll babysit your kids for you, but don't make this a habit. I'm not going to do this for you next weekend. I'm only going to do this one time. So if you need a babysitter in the future, you got to work that out and ask somebody else because this is not what I'm going to do. Your kids get kind of loud. When I tell them to take a nap, they don't want to take a nap. And I'm older now and all that noise, it bothers me. Whatever the situation is, however it looks for you, you need to be upfront and honest with people. If you don't want to go and be supportive of someone who is doing something, tell them, this is not personal. I am very happy that you are opening up your business. I am very happy that your dream and your vision is coming true. God is so awesome. God is so good. I will give a donation to you for your business, but physically I won't be there because you have some people that are going to be there that I don't care for. I don't want to see them. I don't want to be in a position where I feel uncomfortable. Come on, guys. You all are grown. You all are grown. I'm trying to help somebody. This is how you navigate through life. Tell people, let them know. I don't feel comfortable, but I'll be supportive. I send all my love. I'm going to be there in spirit, but physically, no. And explain to them why. Explain to them why. Now, if that person is upset because they feel like you're making an excuse to not be there, then you're going to have to work that out some other type of way. Prayer works. Because only you and God knows the reason why you're not doing a particular thing. But what I'm telling you guys is that, um, excuse me, you got to be upfront with people, but have the right attitude when you give. Whatever it is, if you want to volunteer at your church, if you want to volunteer and stay after work, you get off of work at 2 o'clock, but you got to stay there until 3.30. If that is not something you want to do, tell the boss. Tell the manager or the supervisor. Tell HR. Let them know. I can't stay after work any extra time. I have to go pick up my children. I have to meet my spouse. Or I'm just tired. I'm not feeling it today. I gave you all the eight hours. Can you guys go and ask another person? But if you don't make this stuff clear with people, and if you don't put this stuff out on the table, and someone comes and asks you something, then you will have a nasty attitude and it's not becoming of you. You can have a simple conversation with somebody and break down why you don't want to do a particular thing. But I do want to make this video also just to explain to you all that when you hear me talk about giving or you hear other men and women of God talking about giving, you don't shoot that down immediately and start being arrogant and puffed up talking about who and what you're not going to give. The thing is, this is what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus tells us to give. Jesus tells us that he loves a cheerful giver. God tells us to love one another. And sometimes, all of us, I am included in this, and I say it without any shame or embarrassment, all of us need some type of help. Sometimes it may have been financially. Sometimes you may have to go and stay with somebody. Sometimes you may need some food. Are you serious? This is Bible. This is Bible. It's not always, I'm going to pray for you. Sometimes you got to physically do something. When somebody is coming to you and they saying, I'm hungry, I don't have enough money to buy food for me and my kids. Physically, 
outside of you saying, well, I'm going to pray for you. God is good. God is going to come through and he's going to give you that promise. No, physically, if you have the money, if, if, like I said, if you don't have it, then you not in, you not going to come in this comment section and give a rebuttal. Save it. I don't receive it. I don't want to hear it. I'm talking about those of you. If you are in the position and you're using wisdom. And you know that this person is not a grifter and you know that they're not underhanded and conniving and you know they're not a user or a manipulator or underhanded. That's who I'm addressing because there are going to be grifters that come to you. There are going to be people that are slick, that are sneaky, and they want to take advantage of you because they know you have a good heart. And they know that you don't really tell people, no, it's rare that you say no. They will try to play you. Somebody just tried to do it to me earlier today. All I'm saying is that, yes, in all things, the Bible says in all things, use wisdom. The Bible also says, guard your heart with all diligence. You're supposed to guard your heart. You, just, you don't just go out here blindly just giving to people because you got it. Or you have it at that moment. All I'm saying is that, guys, you all got to stop twisting up a lot of stuff that you read, that you hear, and that you see. It's always uh, a deeper rabbit hole to go down before you see something or hear something and you take it and run with it. Overall, I'm going to tell you all again, when you give, give cheerfully. Give out the kindness of your heart. And if you are in the position to give, always use wisdom. Don't just have this mentality and this attitude. Oh, I'm only going to give to people that are in the kingdom. Oh, I'm only going to give to somebody when God lead me to. Sometimes you're going to be in a position where you give and the voice of God did not tell you to give. That should go without saying. Sometimes you're literally going to be out here in the world and you're going to see that somebody has a need. And God is not going to speak anything to you. You're just naturally going to know there is an immediate need that this person needs it's just unbelievable the ignorance that i see on a day-to-day -day basis especially in my comment section it's, it's disgusting so that's the video message guys be a cheerful giver and go read second corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 that's the video message well guys it's time for me to go because i have some other things to do the Lord willing, I will be back with another video message. If any one of you have taken offense to anything I spoke about in this video message, it's okay, it's all right, I'm not worried about it, I am not concerned because I know you will forgive me in the morning.